YouTube is it going the goat house is back with the 10 absolute biggest steals in the 2024 NFL draft a lot of steals had to narrow it down here go to our channel check out that recent content winners losers grades rankings of undrafted free agents you will not be disappointed in that content number 10 you've been staring at it for a second Cedric Gray the North Carolina linebacker going to the Tennessee Titans he was my number two overall linebacker in the entire draft and the Titans get him in the fourth round so that's a mega steal there I thought people overthought him you watch the tape what stands out the most the coverage skills the coverage instincts like he is really good in coverage some of the best linebackers in today's NFL that's where they where it starts you have you have to be able to cover in today's NFL but then you factor in his run support in his range, he led all Power 5 defenders in tackles. Tackles aren't the most important stat in the world, but it means something for linebackers. It definitely means something. It's, it's definitely somewhat important. Um, and he can rush the quarterback, so it's a safe pick. I think he'll start for the Tennessee Titans. Number 9, going to go Cooper DeGene in the second round going to the Philadelphia Eagles. My number 23 overall player in the draft, and he slips out of the first round. And a little bit in the second round, the Eagles grab him. Now, he was a tough one to rank. I talked about it before. If somebody was going to draft him at outside corner, then I'm going to wish I had him way lower on my board than that because I think he needs to play more than that. Some of his flaws, is on, uh, they're on the boundary. So I liked him all over. Safety, I could see the upside there in between the hashes, being a playmaker. Nickel, again, being able to play underneath and inside, but also playing outside corner. And the Eagles got a number of co outside corners. They drafted one the first round, which was a steal as well, and Mitchell. Um, so chances are they're going to use DeGene. He's a D they have him listed as DB. You know They're going to use him everywhere. Safety, slot corner. Uh, mainly, and then maybe outside if they need him out there. So I love it. I, it makes me want to move him up the board. And he goes later than where I have him at 23. So uh, they, they did have to trade a little bit to get him, but this is great. He's going to be fun. little piece for the Eagle, Vic Vangio and the Eagles. Number eight, a first-round pick. Dallas Turner was uh, clear-cut clear my number one pass rusher throughout this whole process and also by far has the most upside out of that pass rusher class and the just think about it the Vikings get the number one pass rusher or at least the pass rusher with the number the most upside at 17 that is unheard of unheard of everybody and their mother had him mocked to the Falcons at eight at eight and I thought for sure like I was starting to think like, yeah that's probably gonna happen whenever I didn't mock it everyone lost their minds like he's going to the Falcons at eight obviously they shocked the world and then I thought maybe the Broncos at 12 for Turner. They shocked the world. He just kept slipping. The Vikings did have to move up a little bit. But that was not supposed to be possible. So when do you get a pass rusher like that down at 17? It's just it's just unheard of. Number seven, Tanner McLaughlin. So you got to dig a little deeper here into the sixth round on late day three. McLaughlin was my number three tight end. I just kept moving up the board because I kept, at first I was like, I love his tape, but the arm length, and he's coming off an injury, so uh, do we? Uh, a little afraid to put him in the top three. But I'm like, the tape says he's top three. This guy's an absolute weapon in the passing game. He's a really good route runner. He's even better of a route runner, not really because of his footwork, even though he does have that, but because he can he can read defenses. He and he'll sit down in coverage and find the soft spots and zones. He's a weapon in the passing game. He is a absolute weapon, and it's I don't know if the Bengals like what he could become. Like it's better than. Um, you know, you how Uzama was with the Bengals or how Hayden Hurst was with the Bengals. Like, it's much better a, of a receiving threat. So, just an element that the Bengals haven't had in their offense, I feel like. Is it going to be right away? Probably not. It could be, but probably not. Coming off injury, and he's just a rookie, a six-round rookie. So, um, but he, my number three tight end, that's an absolute weapon in the sixth round for a team that could use a starting tight end, really. They have a number of guys that can play, but... To me, they don't have a guy like this. They don't have a guy like this. So I thought that was an absolute steal. He was one of my favorite players in the draft. Number six, Terry and Arnold, another, not only another first round pick, another Alabama first round pick. Terry and Arnold was my number one corner in the class, the whole process, no hesitation there. And we knew the corners could kind of surprisingly drop a little bit, but the 24th overall pick, the 24th overall pick, was not supposed to be possible to a team that has a massive need at the cornerback position. I mean, just perfect scenario for the Detroit Lions. This was never mocked because it was not supposed to be possible. Number one corner, 24th overall. 
absolute mega steal, uh, not just on day one, but looking at the draft as a whole. And we actually have the Lions back-to-back here. Christian Mahogany in the sixth round. Boston College guard was one, one of my favorite interior offensive linemen in the entire class. I loved watching him. He's mean, you know, nasty, high motor. He's pretty damn quick, and he's very efficient. Um, to me, it would not have been a surprise if he went in the second round uh, or third round. And apparently there was a little bit of unknown injury. I you know still trying to figure out more information on that. But to get a guy of, of, that I think could start day one, but the Lions are so good on the offensive line, they may not need him to. But to get a guy like that in round six, it's just, just absurd. It's just a crazy mega steal. So um, Mahogany going to the line. Lions make the list twice. Uh, that'll be number five. Number four, Brandon Dorless, uh, who I'm probably his biggest supporter uh, you know, from this draft cycle. He was in the top 50 on my board. Uh, just loved this game. I loved how versatile he was playing inside, playing outside, different alignments inside as well, or just across the D-line. I liked him a little better inside. Um, he played a lot better there this year, I thought. He put on... The only knock was a little bit of a tweener. Could he put on some more size? He put on size at the combine and looked pretty athletic. Um, Pass deflection machine. He's got some nifty moves. I feel like he's instinctive. I always see him kind of just flowing to where the ball is going to be, not after it's already there. Uh, I compared him to Justin Matabuke. I think he can have a similar career path where early on it's like trying to figure out his exact position, how to use him, put a little bit more strength, a little more weight on him, and then boom, huge breakout season I think will happen somewhat early in his career. Um, so I thought he was a second round pick like all day for me. He was a second round pick. I wouldn't have been surprised round three. There's a few teams picking early three where I was, I was predicting picks as I was watching the draft. I'm like, they're going to take this guy here. They're going to take that guy. It was happening. But for him, I kept thinking this team's going to take him. Nope. This team's going to take him. Nope. I gave up. Ends up going to the Falcons around four. Raheem Morris, um, really good defensive coach, developing guys. And, and you know, he's not going to be Aaron Donald, but like little undersized of an athletic pass rushing machine from the interior it's like we've heard that before you know so um, I'm a huge doorless fan it could be right away but wait a couple years and then I, I think we're gonna be talking about this guy like he should have been a first round pick maybe I think it's definitely like three years from now I think it's possible so when, when we could have to wait on we'll see I think it's an absolute steal number three we're gonna be talking about receivers here the rest of the way Troy Franklin going to the Denver Broncos in round four just a huge steal. We went in the round four, best available player. Like someone's going to steal him. The Broncos get him, and they already at this point had their his quarterback in Bo Nix. Um, so they have that connection. Troy Franklin is is the best Oregon Duck receiver of all time. It's a pretty good program over there. Like by easily the best, consistent, very productive. He's consistently separating. Um, he's really good tracking the ball downfield. He's really good with his speed downfield, but tracking the ball in tough situations. As good as it gets. He does have some drops here and there, some body catches um, on routine plays, but his highs are so special. They are so special. So the Broncos get a good one here. Um, We'll see what happens with Cortland Sutton. I do like Cortland Sutton a lot, so it's hard to say Franklin will be the receiver one, but I actually think, though, if Sutton's there, I think Franklin is – I think he's easily passing up some some of the other guys, and he's receiver too. I think he could be better than Jerry Judy was for the Broncos which he was a little disappointing, but still like sneaky productive. Uh, maybe it doesn't happen year one. He needs to catch the ball a little more consistently. Some of his drops, though, were a little low, a little behind him. He does have his quarterback with him, though, but we knew it. That was a mega steal. We're sticking with the receivers. Number two, it's uh, two, one versus two is so tough. Adonai Mitchell from Texas was my receiver five, my 20th overall player in the entire draft in the Colts get him in round two. We knew he could slide a little bit, especially definitely past that 20 spot like I had on my big board. It's not where I mocked him, but we're at him on my big board because uh, the low effort plays. um, And there's some people mentioned like character or passion. I I don't think there's an issue with that. You know, it seems like a good kid overall, Uh, but there are some low effort plays uh, and, and he is diabetic, but it doesn't really change his talent. So we knew he could probably slip to early second, but the Colts get him. Later than that, even in the second round, and it's just, um, it's just a huge steal because you have a legit receiver. I mean, he ran an NFL route tree. He's fast, a good combination of speed and size. I like that when the game's on the line, it's like go to AD. You know, it's not and all these weapons that Texas has these days. It felt like Mitchell was like, "Get me the ball. We're going to you, big time play." 
uh, that overworthy, you know, so most of the time. So I think he's like, he's kind of an Alec Pierce role. I think he's better than him day one. I, I really do. So uh, putting him in there, Michael Pittman and Josh Downs, I like those guys a lot. It's a trio. It's maybe it's a good group of four, really. Um, it's a steal. 20th overall player in the second round. We were kind of just waiting for him to come off the board. And number one, this is my receiver five, my receiver six. So actually a little bit ranked a little lower than Mitchell. But Roman Wilson going in round three, I didn't think that was possible. Uh, if you would have said, if you had told me he's not going to go round two or you have him, I had him early two. Um, he was my 33rd overall player. Uh, if you would have said he's not going to go there, he's either going to go one or three. I'm like, oh, well, he's going to go. He's going to go one. You know, even though I was pretty firm early second, but he goes in round three. Cannot believe he's there. He's an absolute safe pick because, I mean, you could be a little disappointed. That he's not the biggest dude in the world, and he doesn't like break a bunch of tackles. Or he's not going to make like a huge contested catch. But you know, he's a slot receiver that is open as much as anybody in this class and catches the ball as consistent as anyone. He finds open lanes. He'll get the first down on third down. He has, he has some clutch catches, you know, even though there's not a ton of contested ones. Like, it's a guy that's a safe bet to come in there and be a really good slot receiver, get open, catch the ball, and be an impact. And the Steelers badly needed somebody like that. Like, we're trying to replace Deontay Johnson. I think he's a little bit different, but could be that style player for them. He's going to be open. You know, and he should be really, really productive as a rookie. It's just the quarterback's got to see him. But him, you know, my receiver six in a loaded receiver class. I was a little higher on him than most people, but everyone liked him. Uh, everyone, everyone loved him in the second round. Uh, but for them to get him, like, perfect fit, just what they needed, incredible valuable in value in round three, and a guy that's going to be a big-time impact, to me, that's my that's my biggest steal. I, I watch out for him to be crazy impact year one. Just the quarterback's got to see him. That's the thing. Uh, and I think it'll be, I think Russell Wilson's, I, I almost, I would prefer Justin Fields to start for them because you could see his upside. But when thinking about Roman Wilson, I'm like, Russell Wilson probably can find him more often. He's going to see, he's going to take the underneath slot receiver. He's going to see him. Fields only knock is he's not really seeing open receivers in a timely manner. So now I kind of want Russell Wilson to start for them. And it sounds like he will. Um, but because Wilson will be open here. Some other guys that just missed the cut, some other picks. Uh, we actually had a few from the Seahawks. So the Seahawks had three that I considered and didn't make, didn't just make the cut. So that's tough. Broncos had two. They had a, a guy make the cut though. And there's more than this. I'm floating here. Uh, but there's definitely way more steals than this, but these are the ones like in my head, like I really consider for top 10. There's way more steals than this, but Byron Murphy is my top defensive player in the class. They got him at 16. Why he didn't make the cut for top 10? It's like we thought it was kind of realistic. Christian Haynes was one of my favorite guards in the class, and uh, I thought for sure he was a lock to go round two. They get him in round three. DJ James, I like a lot to get, and he was in my top 100. To get him in round six is pretty crazy. Broncos had one of the best day threes you will ever see, and we'll see it on the field, I guess, but with Troy Franklin, who made the list. Chris Abrams, Drain, I like. Former receiver turned corner. Looks like a natural uh, as a boundary guy. He's solid. He's got a lot of upside. And Audrick Estime was my running back five. Like The running backs that were going before him were wild. Like To me, Estime is just better, plain and simple. So, steal there. TJ Tampa was a second-round corner. I wasn't surprised he dropped a little because the slower 40, not, not too slow, though. Slower 40, and he is pretty scheme-dependent. So I, I, I probably would have been, wouldn't have been surprised if it was round three, even later round three, but to get him in round four is like, okay, round two guy, round four. And then Jalen Wright was my number two running back, and I was surprised he was sitting there in round four. Team's just a little concerned about that Tennessee system transferring over, but it's a running back that has home run speed, and he's actually the, the power that he has combined with that speed is a little rare. Like, he can be something. So um, two rounds were back where he should have been, so... Um, love those as well, but those are my biggest, biggest deals. They're, they're a longer list of them, but we had winners and losers for every day of the draft videos for that. And there's a lot of steals and best picks overall uh, in each round in those videos. So check those out. Bunch of grades, a bunch of different videos. Follow us on Twitter as well. Sponsors, GLD shop, liquid IV code goat for a percentage off there. That is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.